we continue. Question 20 is saying, given that x minus y is equals to 7, and that x squared minus y squared is equals to 21, find the value of x and the value of y. So these are simultaneous equations. The word simultaneous means to occur at the same time. So they are saying find the same value of x and the same value of y such that when you replace them into those two, it will give you true sentences. Let's use the substitution method. This is called the substitution method. So in the substitution method, what we are going to do is to name the equations. We are going to name uh, the first equation, equation 1. We will name the second equation, equation 2. And then we'll form a third equation from equation 1 such that we are going to replace it into equation 2. So we are going to do that. If we have to make x the subject of the formula, we have to transpose this negative y from the left to the right it to become a positive. So we'll call this one equation 3. When we form the third equation, we'll replace where there's x, we'll replace 7 plus y. Let's do that. So we have x squared minus y squared is equals to 21. Where there's x here, we'll replace 7 plus y. So we have 7 plus y squared minus y squared is equals to 21. From here, we'll expand this. So we are saying 7 plus y times 7 plus y. If we expand, we are going to get 49 plus 14y plus y squared minus y squared is equals to 21. But y squared minus y squared will give us a 0. So we'll remain with 49 plus 14y is equals to 21. So from here, what are we going to do? We'll transpose this 49 from the left side to the right hand side and the sign has to change. So we, uh, we are going to get 14y is equals to 21 minus 14. When the signs are different, subtract, put the sign of the bigger number. So we are saying 14 minus 21, and then we'll put a negative sign. So our 14y will be equals to negative 28. To find the value of y, we'll divide both sides by the coefficient. Our coefficient here is the number before the letter, which is 14. So when we divide both sides by 14, we are going to get a, a negative 2. So our y will be equals to negative 2. Since we found the value of y, we'll substitute it in equation 3 to find the value of x. Let's do that. So we are saying x is equals to 7 plus y when y is equals to negative 2. So here where there's y, we'll replace a negative 2. So we are saying x is equal to 7 minus 2. Our x will be equal to 5. Therefore, our final answer is x is equal to 5 and y is equal to negative 2. So when we get these values of x and y and replace them into those two equations, they are going to give us true sentences. We continue. We continue. We have part B, which is saying, a die is rolled 10 times, giving the following scores. Find the median score. A die is rolled 10 times, giving the following scores. We have the scores 2, 5, 3, 1, 4, 6, 2, 1, 2, and 2. Find the median score. So when they say the median, they, are, they want us to find the middle score. Which one was the middle score? What we are supposed to do is to first rearrange we have to arrange in ascending order. Ascending order means arrange from the least score to the greatest score. How many times was one scored? One was scored twice. How many times was two scored? Two was scored four times. How many times was three scored? Three was once, four ones, five ones, six ones. So if we want to find the median, you find that we are looking for values between 5 and 6, those two. One will go out, one out, these two will go out, that two will go out. We have to cancel the 6, 5, 4, and the 3 will remain with a 2 and a 2. Now, since the 2 is appearing twice, 
it's like uh, an average so we are going to add and divide by two so our median score will be equals to four divided by two which is a two that was our median score we continue what about the mean score what about the mean score to find the mean score we are supposed to add all the scores divided by the number of times the die was rolled so let's add them so our mean score will be equals to add all the scores divided by the number of times the die was rolled so when we add all the the scores we will find that we'll get 28 the number of times the die was rolled was 10 our median score is 2.8 we continue we continue question 21 is saying a cyclist traveled a cyclist arrived a cyclist arrived at town k from l after a journey lasting one and a half hours what time did he start off from l if he arrived at 10 10 hours i'll read that again a cyclist arrived at town k from town l after a journey lasting one and a half hours what time did he start off from l if he arrived at 10 10 hours so we'll take this one step by step first we have to convert this one and a half hours into hour and minutes an hour is 60 minutes and half an hour is 30 minutes so we are saying one and a half hours now if you look at this one here you find that you cannot subtract one minus three so what we are supposed to do is to get a one hour from 10 which is 60 minutes add the 60 minutes to 10 minutes you get a 70 when you remove that one from 10 you remain with a nine so we have nine hours 70 minutes so from here that's when we can subtract subtract seven minus three you get a, a four subtract nine minus one you get eight so the cyclist started off at 0 8 40 hours for him to reach at 10 10 in one and a half hours we continue we continue if the cyclist average speed was six ki uh, six kilometers per hour what was the distance between k and l if the cyclist's average speed was six kilometers per hour what is the distance between k and l average speed is equals to distance taken over time taken distance covered over time taken so the uh, average speed is equals to total distance over time taken so what was the average speed the average speed has already been given so where there's average speed here we'll substitute six kilometers where there's distance we don't know the distance where there's time we'll put our, our one and a half hours so let's do that so where there's average speed we'll put our six kilometers per hour where there's total distance we don't know time taken we have one and a half hours from here what are we supposed to do we'll cross multiply if you multiply six times 1.5 you get nine kilometers therefore the total distance taken was nine kilometers kl is equals to nine kilometers we continue two towns lie on the same meridian find the difference in latitude between these two towns if they are 200 nautical miles apart two towns lie on the same meridian find the difference in latitudes between these two towns if they are 200 nautical miles apart so we'll take it step by step a meridian is a longitude so we have a longitude and they want us to find the difference in the the latitude so it's like you're taking an arc we are looking at an arc so if we look at the two towns and call them a b we are going to substitute where there's the a b will replace the 200 nautical miles because they are saying find the difference in latitudes what we are looking for is the angle here the 
distance has already been given for the arc which is 200 so where there's a b we'll replace the 200 and then we'll use the radius of the earth in nautical miles so the radius of the earth in nautical miles is 3437 so where there's a b for the distance of the arc we have 200 then we have theta that is the difference in latitudes they want us to find for the angle between the two we'll replace our pi as 22 over 7 let's multiply that so if you multiply 2 times 22 over 7 times 3437 we are going to find that we are going to get 21604 pi over 360 from here what are we supposed to do we'll cross multiply we'll cross multiply so if you multiply 200 times 360, we'll get 72,000. To find the value of theta, we have to divide both sides by 21,604. Let's do that. If we divide 72,000 by 21,604, we'll find that our theta is equal to 3.3 degrees. So the difference in latitudes was 3.3 degrees. We continue.